Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is essentially uh, call this press conference to announce the fact that, uh, <clears throat> as you know, that uh, in this year, the in the budget, the honourable prime minister had announced the allocation of uh, some funds for the um, uh, preparations of uh, parliament for the new sitting of parliament for the new parliament that will sit under the 2013 constitution uh, after the elections. Um, a decision has been made that the parliament will now be moved uh, to the parliament which existed on 14 May 1987. So the parliamentary complex that was at the government buildings, which currently operates as one of the uh, superior courts will be reconverted to the Parliament House. Uh, it already has the infrastructure that's in place. It has uh, its own separate entrance. It's part of the government buildings complex. And it's obviously closer to the uh, Prime Minister's office. Uh, it has uh, the, some of the major courts around it, but it's also closer to the amenities um, in, in the city. Um, so at the moment, um, what will actually happen that there are certain uh, judicial uh, officers and some of the courts will move to the, what will now be the old parliament house in Veito. So uh, the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal and the Family Law Court will move to Veito. These are the three confirmed uh, judicial branches that will move to the Veito complex. Uh, there may be others, such as, you know, juveniles court, etc. It does make sense, for example, to have the family court move over to Veito. There's a lot more privacy at the moment, as you know, that uh, when people are standing in the corridors, their families, their you know, custody battles, uh, issues uh, over children, maintenance, etc. So to um, give that privacy, etc., of course, Veito will work quite well and uh, it does have functioning offices. In respect of the parliament being uh, located or relocated now to government buildings, it also means that the various political parties that will have their political party offices, the leader of opposition, the various political parties, they'll be a lot more accessible to members of the public. Uh, you know, they're walking distance from the bus stand. Uh, it's near the media organizations uh, closer to town. So it provides a lot more accessibility for members of the public. Uh, we've already, uh, for example, shown the uh, head of uh, UNDP, the, the site. Uh, as you know, the UNDP is compiling a report. They've got a draft report, which is uh, what the Beni Marama government had commissioned, which is a preliminary needs assessment report uh, for the Fijian parliament. And uh, we've just received a draft copy of it, which we are just uh, discussing with them in terms of some of the corrections, some of the typos that need to be made. Um, a number of uh, countries have also offered assistance, as you know, uh, in respect of resourcing the parliament, the new parliament. Um, the Indians have offered to train our Hansard reporters. There will be advertisements going out very soon for uh, Hansard reporters to be appointed. Under the new constitution also, the parliament for the first time uh, is given true independence, as in the Secretary General to Parliament. It has um, uh, categorically it's stated in the Constitution that it is to be independent, so it has its own structures. Previously, it was not categorically stated. Uh, it was more by way of convention. But uh, this time in the new Constitution, it has that true independence. So that is the announcement uh, that uh, uh, we are gathered here to make this afternoon. And you'll see quite a bit of uh, work being carried out in the next few weeks in terms of the, um, some of the physical works that will take place um, at, the, uh, at the government building site. Um, there was an allocation of a million dollars for the refurbishment of parliament and bringing it up to speed. Now, what we intend to do is that the, the now the new parliament site, which is the first parliament site after independence, uh, we want to have it as um, uh, best facilitated as possible, so we want to have Wi-Fi, etc., in that area, 
the members of parliament need to have their own uh, availability of desktop you know, screens. So if a member of parliament or a minister presents a bill in parliament, they can see it on the screens if there are diagrams, etc. So you actually can have some good and healthy discussions as opposed to people falling asleep uh, at their sitting positions. So it's a lot more enclosed area. As you know, the first parliament that we had had 52 members uh, in parliament. Uh, we now, of course, will have 50, so there is ample room. Uh, we are looking at, for example, uh, refurbishing those of you who may know a little bit about the, um, the first parliament we had. Um, there was some space upstairs for the Hansard reporters. We want to have a special area for the media. So to have that um, uh, refurbishment been done, to be able to cater for that, uh, it has, of course, other amenities available. Like I said, you know, it's uh, accessible uh, to to the city. People can walk to it. Uh, it's also it's got a post office uh, there, which makes it easier for members of parliament, for their constituencies to write letters to them. They can pick it up straight from there. Uh, some of the uh, wooden buildings you see uh, in front of the uh, government buildings on the on the left hand side. Uh, we are looking at some relocations uh, for those um, uh, offices that currently exist there uh, in order to provide um, uh, those offices for political parties so people can come and visit them directly and they of course can just take a bus or, or from the walk from the bus stand so that's the uh, uh, that's some of the, um, the plans that we've got on foot at the moment so for the political parties do you mean the registered parties well, wh whichever political party will, you know, win seats in parliament. As you know that, uh, uh, you know, we normally allocate a office space for political parties that um, uh, win seats in parliament. Any other questions? Um, no, obviously there are other considerations, like I said, uh, in terms of the accessibility to the um, uh, members of the public is a major consideration. Uh, the fact is a lot more compact. It will require less uh, money too, uh, to bring it up to speed. It's a mo lot more solid structure. Uh, as you know, it's sandstone. Um, you also have the availability of the Hansard reporters being beneath the actual parliamentary um, building itself. Underneath that, the hands are reporters can come up. Uh, it's closer to uh, its accessibility for members of the public, you know, amenities. Uh, and it also has its own entrance. It has got a lot more better presentation also. Uh, for those of you who may know that the, the entrance of the parliament is from the Albert Park site. And, um, yeah, and it does give a, um, a significant um, projection of it being quite a you know, firm building. It, it, it defines uh, um, uh, something that's permanent, something that's concrete, um, and therefore the, uh, this parliament uh, complex has been uh, chosen. It obviously has to be ready by before parliament sits. Um, we hope to start that very soon. There'll be a little bit of work. Um, but uh, as you know, that uh, if you look at the old, uh, the Veito complex, I should say, uh, the acoustics are terrible. Uh, you cannot have air conditioning. If you want to have air conditioning, you have to lower the ceiling. You have to spend a lot of money uh, in that place to bring it up to speed. Even in terms of uh, wiring and ducting and all of that, it will cost a lot of money. So this also, in one way, is a, is a blessing because it does uh, save us money too. Uh, but apart from that fact, it is a lot more uh, you know, solid and concrete.